Hello, Alex from Trainer Day here. Today I'm on the Today tab, funny, okay. And I'm gonna show you how all of our settings work. So up at the top here, I can click on the little gear icon and go to settings. We've got sports cycling. I'm not gonna to explain too much here. You know, the bottom one is concept two. The middle one is Avasa trainer, but most people are gonna use cycling here. Then you can enter your cycling FTP. You can add devices from here, but you can also do them from the workout screen. So you can see add devices there. I can enable Apple Health on Apple devices or your rider weight. It'll take your weight and automatically update it. It will also allow you to use your heart rate. Okay, so then we've got our language, right? We can select which language we want to use. Um, you've got some, you know, your rider weight and bike weight here. You've got connections, so you can add your different connections. You know, Strava and interesting places. So if you add interesting places, it will put a map on your, uh, on when, when you Strava data, so it'll just take a random map. The one thing is, is that map, depending on the, it's more interesting places is pretty flat, but it will generally match your power to the slope on the route and so it will change the speed and distance a little bit but not much because it's flat it's, it won't change much we've also got workout of the day under training peaks and so workout of the day allows your calendar or the workout that you have inside of training peaks to actually show up on our today tab and on our plan tab under or under the workouts on the plan tab so you'll see your training peaks calendar inside of our app now you only get one calendar source at a time so you can either use our calendar you can use the training peaks calendar or you can use the intervals icu calendar inside of our app for deciding which workout you know will show up today then garmin we've got a bunch of features here a lot of this is actually the garmin functionality is more about sending workouts planned workouts that you plan to do to garmin we Garmin doesn't allow new partners like ourselves to actually send a completed workout there. So you can see here we say if you want to send a completed activity or a completed workout to Garmin, you need to use a third party service like RunGap or there's others. Intervals ICU, again, it's got a workout of the day feature if you want to use their calendar. Um, Dropbox, you can send, you know, uh, you can automatically have your completed activity go to Dropbox um, and Google Calendar if you just want to see what you're doing inside your Google Calendar you can send it there and also you can send planned workouts to Wahoo as well so those are all premium features there all of those connections are all premium and other options we're, we're considering making Strava a free option but <laughs> I don't know it will probably happen uh, let's see so then we go into other options and we can see enable auto extend cooldown so auto extend cooldown if I turn that on while I'm pedaling and I get to the end of the workout it will just whatever the intensity is at that time when it auto extends I think it's about five minutes before the end of the workout or or I can't remember exactly, but it will auto extend and whatever your intensity is at at that time, it will automatically just extend it. And then you can insert some additional, uh, you can insert some additional intervals or, or you can actually merge workouts or you can do all kinds of stuff, but this kind of just gives you freedom to train as long as you want and you just stop when you're ready to stop, right? So it's nice. So power smoothing smooths out your line on your on the chart while you're training. So some devices output very messy power data and other ones output cleaner data. So this will clean it up. Power match is if you are using external pedals or or a crank arm power meter or some secondary power meter to your training to your trainer's power meter meaning you have a smart trainer and you have extra power power uh, pedals or extra power source 
What this does is it tries to match your power from your pedals to what what's happening with the trainer itself. So when there's, let's just say your pedals are reading 10 watts lower than your smart trainer, this will automatically adjust the two, but there's like a 20 second lag or so. So this works better on longer duration intervals or for, you know, sustained efforts, zone, zone two, zone three, then it will kind of match them better. For really short duration intervals, this isn't optimal because it takes a long time for it to actually make the adjustment. But anyway, most of our users are quite happy with it. Someday we should make it work better for short intervals, but that's definitely more complicated. So double-sided power meters. So some people are using a pedal and those pedals only output half the amount of power. If you have two pedals, we only read one of them. So if we're reading one of your pedals and they both have a power meter, for example, and then we're gonna show half the power. So doubling this will, will get your power on track. Um, I'll turn off all of these for now. Uh, quick start tab on open. So we've got a unique feature that you can you can just start pedaling. So if you if you do this, you open our app, it will automatically start on quick start and you can just start pedaling. So you just open our app, start pedaling and that's it. There's you're, you're you're instantly going. You're going within like 3 seconds or something. You're you're starting your workout. And then at that point in time you start warming up, then you start browsing around inside of our app. You can look for a workout, you can, you know, take your planned workout and you can merge it in. So so you don't have to sit around and fool around and look for something while you're not pedaling. You can actually start recording immediately and, and, and then look for what you want to do. And it will just merge the two, what you've done with the new workout that you insert. Now, if you insert something and it goes towards the end and you've got this long you know, part, then you just press the skip button. I'll just show you that real quick. So let's just say we're starting here and we've got this workout, you know, once it's started, oh, I'm in test mode because you, you see this arrow over here. So you see that the double kind of arrows there, you press that and it will just, so if I merge right now, let's just, let's do this merge so I can show it. Let's, we go back, we find a workout, we merge this one in, merge workouts. Now you can see I've got this 60 minute <laughs> warm up at the beginning you know, you just keep pedaling as long as you want and then you just hit this next and it just skips to the workout that you actually want, right? So that, that just saves your time, gives you a longer warm up, more efficient, right? You're just moving really quickly. So let's keep going back to the settings. So we're in other options here. Start on quick tab. Um, disable auto start, start, stop, start. So. Right now, if you enter the workout screen and you just start pedaling, it's gonna start and stop. You can actually disable that so that even if you stop pedaling, it just keeps recording, right? So sometimes on different devices, some people, or different scenarios, some people just want it to keep recording. They don't want it to auto pause and auto start. So you can turn that off. Um, vibration is just so that you can when you tap on something, it vibrates a little bit in the phone. So it's not super important. Show power zones. So show power zones, I'll show you there. So here, now you can see here, you've got target zone one, you know, and you can see your current target is gray and your next target is blue. So blue is zone two. Um, so you can see your, your target and your next uh, zone that you're, that you're heading for. Okay, so then we, we're still in other options. Real-time workout on PC. So when you enable that, you basically get a URL here. You can also find that URL on our website. There's a little icon that says live, or you can look on the activities tab and you can see a, a link to it. But once you have that link, you can open that up on a browser on your PC and this will output in real time what you're currently doing, how you're pedaling, um, you know, and if you want to learn more about that, I would just say Google for trainer day 
broadcast feature, right? And you'll see an article and a YouTube video on how that works. Four beeps for interval. It just goes beep, 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 beep before an interval changes, or it's just a single beep, beep, you know, before it, before it changes. I don't really like those beeps, so I prefer to have, or, or let's just say I don't like a lot of beeps, so I prefer to turn that off, but different people have different preferences. And then sim, sim mode on, um, that's where you see slope here. So if I go back here, oh, I don't have any devices connected. So let me connect my device there. So there I see slope mode. So here you see the slope mode and slope mode has a percent here and you can press up and it goes up in degrees of slopeness or of steepness. Um, if you turn that off, go to other options. If I turn off sim slope mode there and I go back to that workout and now it says resist here. So here you can see it says resist. So that's resistance mode and resistance mode is percent of your trainer's maximum resistance. So if the maximum resistance well, the maximum resistance on your trainer is going to be 100%, but let's just say the maximum power that your trainer can handle is, is 1,000 watts, then 50% is going to be, you know, half of that resistance, so should be 500 watts or whatever. So resistance is percent of the whole amount that your trainer can resist, the amount of Power is not the perfect word for this, you know, because it's really based on torque, <laughs> but, but I won't get into that. But gen generally, resistance mode is percent of maximum amount and slope is the slope degrees of, of, of a hill. We tend to like slope mode better. It is, it's more common for people to use slope mode. Um, it doesn't really matter, but one, one good thing about slope mode is also is in our workout creator, you can, if you're in, if you're in sim mode or slope mode, then you can create workouts that change automatically from 3% grade to a 4% grade to a, you know, so it's a bit like Zwift, but you're programming your own grades and then ultimately controlling your own power by how hard you pedal. So we tend to like sim mode, slope mode. And these things down here is, uh, threshold HR and app scaling. We'll be removing this soon, but it's here now. This, this sets the heart rate scale on the side. We're going to change it to a fixed scale. It's going to be simpler. Um, and we don't really use threshold HR except for, for something what we call H. This is used for sending a heart rate workout to Garmin or or intervals or or some or wahoo so if you want to send a heart rate based workout this threshold what you can convert workouts and this will send the appropriate value to to one of those it currently is used in our app and for dumb trainers or or non-smart trainers for a conversion inside of our app but we've decided that's too confusing and we're going to remove it so soon so if you don't see it there it won't be there <laughs> increase erg increase this is you know five percent increase every time you click the erg increase button so that's let's go back here i'm on erg i click this and you can see it just went up from 100% down here to 105%. So you can change how much that goes up or down in these settings. And the same with the other ones, the same with, you know, the percent of HR increase, the percent of slope increase, the, per the per percent of resistance increase. Uh, and at the, this is always kind of useful to know which version you're on. I'm on 5.01, you can see. Let me, I'm gonna show one other, so advanced feature here. Uh, which is this plus with a little lock button. If you hold this lock button, it actually unlocks it. And now you can see that you have different modes here and there, it, it explains it to some degree here, but I'll explain it a little bit more. So favorite interval allows you to, you know, set a target. Let's just say current target and lock. 
So if you have current target and lock, and you say insert interval, then every time you press the plus button, it's locked again. And you press the plus button and it will automatically just insert whatever you're currently on. If you're currently on, you know, 300 watts and you press it, it's gonna insert 300 watts. And it's going to do that for 15 seconds because I've got 15 seconds here. So it's gonna set 15, it's gonna automatically insert 15 seconds. If you don't wanna use current and lock, you've got more features here that you can automatically insert an interval if you want. You can insert a specific interval if you wanna, when, every time you click that, you wanna insert, um, you wanna insert, let's just say an interval and a rest, you can do that. So you can say 15 seconds at, you know, at, at 100 watts, and then I'm gonna do with a 60 second break at 150 watts. That doesn't sound like very much of a rest. <laughs> Okay, let's do, let's change that to 50 watts. So now you can either do rest and high intensity or you can do high intensity and a rest. So you can insert both of those here. And now when you click the plus button, it's automatically gonna create an interval. So I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll click it, insert interval. And you can see here at the end, it's kind of, it's not so easy to see, but you can see at the, I should skip forward and then, there, you can see it inserted that interval and the rest after it. Um, and it will just do that every time. So if I click, oh, it, but it'll ask me because it's not locked. If I lock it, right, then all I have to do is, so there it inserted another interval. Now I just click plus, it inserts another, another, another. So you can just insert intervals as you're training. This is kind of the favorite interval feature, but you also can just use last interval. And so it will, for last interval, <laughs> I know this is complicated, but that's fine. For last interval, if you say, let's just say you are training and let's just, let me just get out of here for a second. Let's just say I've got these intervals you see down here, right? So you can see I, I had a, 100 watts and I have a 50 watts. And that's the last interval I just did or I'm doing. So if you are on the last interval tab, you can just automatically say, insert 15 seconds, you know, or let's just go to minutes. Oops, I can't click there. Two minutes. I'm inserting 15 seconds and two minutes of 100 watts and 50 watts. So it's you, you press two buttons and it's just gonna insert those exact same intervals you just did, right? Three more times. And so if I insert those and I, ins I just inserted three more, I can always, if, if I decide three is too many, I can always just skip forward and skip it, right? And just go right to my recovery or whatever. So this allows very dynamic training that you can automatically increase the number of intervals in your current workout while you're training. So you don't have to, you know, if all of a sudden it's like, let's say seven intervals and you're going, gosh, I really feel really good and I could do two more for sure. You just go to that, that you know, that last interval, click on two more and hit, click insert intervals, right? So, or two or three more. So each time you really could just, you know, click plus, click last interval, and that's it. And you just keep getting more of your last interval. <laughs> All right, so that's some of our more advanced features relating to our settings and a deep dive into the settings. I hope that helps you understand some more things that you can do here.